David Taub here, co-creator of NextLevelGuitar.com. Hope all is going well, and I hope your guitar journeys are going famously. And today I have a lesson on lead guitar. We're going to do some kind of fun licks, some different stuff. Uh, I was playing over a jam track in the beginning, and we're going to examine some different soloing strategies and some different licks that you might want to incorporate, put your own spin on, make it your own. If you have a second, please subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to the channel, that really helps us. It helps us to keep bringing the content. Please leave uh, a comment in the YouTube comment box below. Let us know how you like this video. Let us know what videos you'd like to see coming up, what lessons you'd like to see, what gear you'd like to see reviewed. And certainly if you, uh, like the video please share and click the like button give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for your support i was playing over jam track key of a minor the chords over the track is a5 f5 d5 g5 right um power chords very wide open easy to play over i want to choose something kind of dark minor for that kind of rock and modern rock kind of sound. Um, so always know the chords to which you're playing over. That gives the full roadmap to the um, soloing avenues, right, that are there. The key is only a part of it. I chose A natural minor or A aeolian mode. I wanted those dark sounds. I also used A minor pentatonic and blues over all the chords. You could use that, A minor pentatonic. And I was also using uh, notes pulling from different various A minor type arpeggios. So let me show you some of the scales and arpeggios I was using. Um, this is the ammunition, what we're building the licks from, right? Um, a natural minor off of the six string root A note, fifth fret. That scale looks like this. It's also um, up at the 12th fret off the A string root. A minor pentatonic and blues expanded scale. I was using that. Um, that looks like this. And I was using different A minor type arpeggios. I'll show you a few of those. I was pulling some notes from those. Um, you have a nice uh, A minor seventh one here. And then um, I was connecting that kind of up here. You have your nice A minor triad or A minor arpeggio here. You also have a nice A minor seventh right here. And I use an A minor nine arpeggio here, I believe. So that's a good batch of scales and arpeggios that you could use. Uh, some of the devices and licks I was doing, one of the things I was doing which is a lot of fun and is a cool device is what I call pedal tone stacking where I take a pedal tone and I and I play a pedal tone and then I stack another pedal tone but I change the pedal note and I play them back to back and you could stack, I stack two, you could stack three or four and it has this building effect and it sounds really cool. Um, all a pedal tone is is when you play a note you're using that as home base, then play a different note in the scale, go back to the home base note, different note in the scale, back to the home base, different note, and back. So you're pedaling back to that note. And oftentimes I'll use notes, strong notes in the chord that I'm playing over. Uh, root notes, uh, if it's minor, the flat third, flat seventh, right? Um, the fifth, major third if it's, if it's a major chord. Um, so I did a lick like this where I played two pedal tones back to back. <laughs> 
what I was doing there was I was using first an A note, the root note, right, in the in the key to pedal, and then I was using the C note, that flat third in the A, a minor chord to pedal off of. So over the A. Using that A natural minor scale, going back to the A note. And then over the C, the, the C pedal uh, note, I was playing. And you put them uh, back to back. One other thing to note with this device, or any of the device that you're using, is in my mind, what I'm trying to do is set myself up for the next lick. So um, I have that in my mind, and so when I'm setting myself up for the next lick, I want to make sure I have the proper finger position that's going to allow me to play the lick the best I possibly can. So in this instance, if you notice, when I played the second half of that pedal tone, I didn't grab that A note with my pinky. I grabbed it with my second finger. Kind of slid up. And I did that because the next lick I wanted to be in this position because I play that A minor triad that I showed you before, that A minor arpeggio, right? So I wanted to have my second finger on that root note so I can grab the C and the E and play that very fluidly. So that's kind of a thing to keep in your mind when you're soloing, you want to kind of always kind of set yourself up for the next lick. And that lick is kind of cool. So a nice cool lick I was doing, I was pulling off on the triad and then just working back up the notes in the arpeggio. You can do that with any obviously arpeggio or triad, it sounds nice when you start repeating it and then when you build up the speed, it sounds really cool. And jam tracks are just an invaluable tool for the practicing guitarist, right? Um, it allows you to practice but putting it in a musical context. So critical. Um, I have some killer jam tracks and some ebooks. I call it my jam track coach. I'll send you six killer sounding jam tracks and two ebooks where I talk about what um, the chords in each track are, what works over them, what scales to try, why they work, right? And I have all the scales diagrammed out also, so it's a really great way to pair together jam tracks and ebooks all together in this jam tracks coach. If you click on that link below, I'll send it to you for free. Another little device I like to use is play off the half steps in whatever scale I'm using. Now obviously if you're using minor pentatonic and blues, it's mostly whole steps or minor third, three frets. So you're not going to be able to do that. But in a natural minor scale or many other diatonic scales, you have half steps. And those are awesome opportunities for melodic licks because those half steps sound so good. One of the licks I did was when I climbed up and then I held a bent note. So remember our A natural minor scale up here. Right? So I came into it. So I'm basically sliding to, uh, here's my half step right here, I'm playing off of the B and the C. Slide to the C, bend the B up to the C. So I'm playing off the half step, and then I'm bending to the half step, and then holding it. And I did that over the A fifth chord, so it, it had a lot of impact. So anywhere, and then later in the solo, I played off of this one, which is actually the same bend. I'm bending the B to the C, but I'm doing it down here on the high E string at the uh, seventh fret. And there's a lot of different devices you could do. You could bend and hold it, bend and vibrato it, bend and release it, slide it, bend it and hold it. All up, up. One last device I was using um, in the solo to kind of build up into a big bend is I kind of descend down the neck in trills down a scale. Now in order to do this you got to know the notes of the scale uh, on one string. 
because um, we're playing it laterally this way. So remember, we're in. I'm using a natural minor, which is no sharps or flats. You know, there's notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. So if you play those notes on the high E string, right, you have your open E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay. All right, so what I did was, when I got up here, see how I brought that into a bend? So I'm moving down the scale one interval at a time, but I'm doing a quick hammer and pull on each note. You could just do one. But I was doing something more like Something like that, where I was trilling the note right down the scale. I really like to use that as a device because it builds this cascading sound down, and then I do a big bend where I create the drama, right? And then hold the tension, throw in some vibrato, right? And then, and then I threw in like a legato type lick. So. That's a really cool little device that, that you could use anywhere that you know all the notes, you know, on one string. So another really good soloing tip, just like I was saying about, you know, knowing where the next lick is and, and getting your finger position straight so you could play these licks fluidly as well as um, phrase them together. Also, know your scales on one string going across the neck, not just vertically up and down. Uh, because then it opens up the door to all of these types of licks. I get a lot of questions on gear, so I like to go over what I'm using in the, each lesson. Um, I'm using a guitar made by uh, Universum Guitars. Um, they make some killer handcrafted instruments in the Ukraine. And their guitars, I'll, I'll flash some more pictures as I'm talking so you can see some of the stellar work they're doing. And they're doing some really creative things with their guitars. Different, it's not just the same old Les Paul copies or Strat copies. I really like their instruments. Um, they play great, they sound great, and they look pretty killer too. Because, you know, it's not only got to sound good, it's got to look good too, right? Um, so this is the Mariana Private Reserve guitar. I played mostly out of the bridge pickup, but it has a killer sounding neck pickup too. Um, and as you can see, um, they put a lot of detail and uh, their fit and finish is really great on these instruments. So I suggest you check them out. You can go to universumguitars.com for more information. I'm playing through a Paul Reed Smith MT-15 uh, tube amplifier that has this, the big 6L6s in it. I'll put a link to that review also. It's a killer amp at a budget friendly price, all tube. Um, I'm playing on the lead channel. The gain's about 70% cranked. Um, fairly low volume, um, lots of mids, and uh, I'm running from the guitar right into the front of the amp. The only effects I'm using is uh, some reverb and a splash of delay uh, with a Keeley Caverns pedal, and I have that in the effects loop of the amp. That's it. Very simple setup. That's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could take some things out of this lesson, kind of put your own spin on it, make it your own, right? Practice over jam tracks. Remember, click on that link below. I'll send you my jam track coach for free. Six killer sounding jam tracks paired with two ebooks. Really help your lead guitar playing. Click on that link. I'll send it to you for free from Next Level Guitar. Also, remember, please subscribe to the channel. That really helps us. You know, like the video if you like it. Give it a thumbs up. Share it. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you'd like to see in coming lessons. You know, uh, let us know what gear you'd like to see reviewed or how you like this lesson and uh, whatnot. Let us know how your guitar journey is going. I'm David Taub, co-creator of Next Level Guitar. You're the good people. Stay tuned. I got lots more killer content and videos coming up. And remember one thing. Your guitar playing is an evolution. Take care and rock. Oh, 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 oh,